back to the Hardcore Fab Shop. I'm Anthony Bronner, and yes, today we're back to work on old hookers and blow back here. We're getting really close to having all the fab work done finally, but we've got a lot of little things that we need to add on to the truck, and these little things are going to make a big difference. Like, for instance, the headlights. Adds a lot to the truck, so stick around. After the intro, we're going to get into what I did to mount those and add some other cool stuff. Real quick before we get into today's video, I do want to say thank you to everyone that has subscribed to the channel. We did hit that 10,000 mark, so that was pretty awesome that we did that a couple days ago. And if you guys haven't seen the video yet of Julie doing a burnout in her old Model A car, you guys might want to go check out that video. I'll put you a link to it up here real quick. She did a pretty good job for her first burnout, and the fact that this car has got such sticky tires that you know we had to kind of stack the deck a little bit to be able to make it work. I want to show you real fast here how sticky these tires are on the back. So you can see this little piece of square tubing right here. That's what normal angle it is before it just falls off. On the back of this thing though, look at the angle of that piece of square tubing before it falls off. I could probably go even just a little bit farther, but I didn't want it to fall off before you guys seen it. So anyways, just fun little thing there to go watch, check out. And yes, thank you again for everyone that has subscribed to the channel. It means a ton to us that you guys have done that. So. Now, back to hookers and blow. So from the beginning, I had in my mind that the headlight was gonna be higher up and a little bit farther back than where it's sitting right now. And I had it sitting up there and I would go there. It definitely could make it happen. That wouldn't be an issue, but it just didn't look right. The whole line on the side here doesn't line up with the rest of the body on the truck or anything like that. So it was really going to kind of give it an awkward appearance here on the side is gonna be the biggest problem with that. So I decided to go ahead and move it down a little bit and put it down in this location. This made mounting it way easier because then I didn't really have to do much to be able to mount it in this spot. I've drilled a hole back here in the back. I've got another hole drilled up here in the front in the actual grill itself. And then I need a little plate still left on the back here to be able to put the last bolt up there tight. It's not going to go anywhere at this point and it actually looks a lot better down here than it did up here. I did get a couple braces in on this stuff here, so that's all locked in pretty good. It's not going anywhere now, so I'm liking that. The front, however, is still a little bit floppier than I'd like it to be, so I still need to make a couple of brackets or a strut or something to go in there and support that a little bit more. I'll do that sometime off camera. That's not that big of a deal and not that exciting. But something that is exciting is we got those horns that uh, we've got them out here on the truck now, so I want to get those mounted real quick so you guys can see what I think of those and where they're going to end up. And then I've got a couple of other cool little features that I want to add real quick after that. looking pretty good I'm digging it I know there's some of you out there right now that are screaming at me going what are you doing putting that big old giant thing up there like that just kind of hanging out there in the middle of everything well you guys got to trust the process here you guys haven't seen the whole picture yet you have actually seen the whole picture I'll show it to you right now notice the extra lights that are on top of the cab those are on there for a reason and that's because I actually have a pair that are going to go on here so let me set the lights up here and then you guys can get a second look and see what you think then. Yeah, 
Wow, look at that. That looks pretty sweet with those extra lights up here. These are going to be our lights like they would be on the back of a wrecker so that you would be able to see the tail lights when you're hauling a car. And I think having those up here have the perfect look, especially with the horns up here. Also going to have an extra little work light up here on each side of the horn. So that's going to kind of fill in some of this area around those horns too. So I think that's all going to come together really nice. Having the extra chrome, extra bling up here on top really dresses the truck up. It's going to offset some of the extra chrome and stuff that's going to be on the blower at the front and of course the wheels. So I think in the end, it's all going to come together looking really good. All right, so there's a backstory to these lights. First of all, everybody's going to ask what they're off of. They're off of a 61 Plymouth Fury. People ask, you know, where do you get the ideas to do things? And in this particular case, that light right there inspired this whole entire truck build, believe it or not. And the way that kind of played out is a family friend had actually given me the light. It was part of his brother's estate. When his brother passed away, then he said, you know what, I could just sell those or whatever, but they're really cool light. If you can use them on a project that I'll be able to actually see, you know, running around town and everything, I'll just give them to you. So I'm like, yeah, that's a cool light. And yeah, I'll put it into my build or something, you know, and I had the old crow that I was working on at the time and I tucked the light and I had it back there at the back of the bed and I was trying to figure out a way to attach it to the back of the bed and have it look good. And it has this little bit of a curl or a little bit of a roll, I guess, not curl, in the bottom of the light right there. And I was really fighting being able to get that to go on the side of a flat bed, you know, a flat panel on the side of a bed. And I was thinking about building a box to come off of there and all that kind of stuff. And I just really wasn't liking the idea of any of that. So I walked away. I just set the light up here on top of the cab, kind of like this on Old Crow. And I was like, oh, wow that actually has the perfect contour on the roof to match that light. So I thought, well, that was pretty cool. And I was sitting there thinking about putting it on Old Crow on the roof, and I'm like, yeah, but this doesn't really go with the style of the truck. So after thinking about it for a minute, you know, what kind of truck would have lights up on the top of it like that, brake lights anyways, and that would be a record. So that was kind of the whole start of the whole hookers and blow thing right there. If you you can see that and kind of see how it spun from there. And I really like the lights. I really appreciate Carol giving them to me. So thank you, Carol, for that. And he did actually inspire this whole entire build because of that. There might still be a handful of you guys out there that are questioning whether or not the lights are a good idea or not. It really doesn't matter because by the time you guys watch this, I'm already going to have some holes drilled and they're going to be mounted. <laughs> things on here and actually see this whole thing come together just like this and I gotta tell you what guys I am digging it it feels really good to see it in this state it's almost there we've got a little bit of stuff left to do I need to mainly focus right now on being able to put the steering column in there and the brake pedals in there because if I can do that then this whole thing can pretty much come apart now and everything can go and get painted get cleaned up get wired get plumbed the whole nine yards so before I can get the steering column, before I can get the brakes in there though, I got one more thing that I need to actually build and that's gonna be a seat. And rather than just buying some stuff and stubbing it in there, we gotta stay true to the course here and actually build something. I would like to build something that would be totally badass and would have all kinds of rivets in it and bead rolled and the whole nine yards. And I might end up doing that in the future, but since I'm on a little bit of a time crunch right now, I'm gonna do one that's a little bit simpler, I think, for the time being but I still think it's gonna be pretty sweet.
right, so we're going to be building a bomber style seat for the truck and this is going to be kind of a basic deal and I think it's going to be actually handy to have some fixtures and stuff like that around to be able to make these anytime I want. So obviously I drew this up in the CAD program to be able to cut it on the plasma table. Got that big piece of tube right there that we're going to be able to take this and form it around there and that's going to allow us to have our shape. Then got this little piece here as a base that's going to allow us to take the base of our seat which has got a little break in it that you've seen and clamp that securely to the table and once that's securely to the table we've got that bent then we can take that put it to the seat base then to cap everything all off and give it a little extra strength we've got this right here We've got this fixture right here, which is going to allow us to bend a 3 16 rod and it'll have the same shape and same form as our seat back at that point. And it's going to be a perfect fit for it so that we can take that rod and then weld it to the seat after everything's all shaped together. Should make everything pretty solid and I think it's going to be a pretty cool looking design. So I guess there's only one thing left to do now and that's actually make a seat and see if all this stuff works. You like it? Yeah, that's like way better than what I made for Henry. I might have to put a pair of these in there. Well, I've got all the stuff here where we can make a few more of them over and over again now. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd like that. I was videoing though, by the way. Oh, oh well, hey, while you're here, um, I came out to tell you we just got an email from Teespring and they're running a end of summer uh, promo. So 10% off of everything in the store, but it's running from September 2nd till September 7th. And uh, you enter promo code SUNSET and you'll get 10% off of everything on our Teespring store. Everything. Uh, everything. All, all the merchandise that's on there. And... We need some um, new shirts. We do. Um, <laughs> if you turn around, the OG Hookers and Blow shirt um, is a limited edition because it is if you're an original supporter of Hookers and Blow. So we're going to be retiring that shirt on September 15th. So if you've been holding off getting one, you want to be sure and get that before September 15th because once it's gone, it's gone. And we do have that as t-shirts, sweatshirts, kids shirts, women's shirts, so uh, if long sleeve t-shirts. So go ahead and get that ordered. Use that 10% promo code. Um, and and if, if between the September 2nd and September 7th. Um, but also, there's a semi driving down the road. 
And also what I was going to say before the semi drove by is that the full color stuff is on the site too. And I did that as tumblers and mugs and posters and stickers and all kinds of good stuff. So if you're interested, I thought some of you might be doing your holiday shopping. If you want to buy it for Christmas, now's a great time to get in there. And also along with that email, Teespring let me know that like every place else out there, the prices are going to be going up. So the prices are going to increase as of September 15th. So if you're thinking about getting anything, like I said, for Christmas or for yourself or whatever, get that order in before September 15th, before those prices go up. So they're going to give us a discount before they stick us with more money. Exactly. <laughs> Apparently that's their plan. So okay. that's why I picked the September 15th as the retirement date for, for the OG uh, hookers and blow shirt. So those will go away when the prices go up and the full color stuff is going to remain and the other hardcore pad logo stuff will be on there afterwards, but the price will be a little bit higher. Just is what it is. Sorry about that folks. All right, then I'll let you get back to videoing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I guess you guys now see that seats pretty well done. I was going to clean it up. I'll clean it up a little bit more and I want to stick it over in the truck and kind of see what it looks like. So, I'll knock a little bit of this off and we'll do that. All right, so we went ahead and knocked out another seat and then got one on the other side kind of kind of rigged in there on a board and a milk crate. Got this one on my little shop stool. Definitely needs to be more secure than this, but actual seat itself feels pretty good. Actually the height feels pretty good too. I think this is exactly where I want to be at in the truck. So that's pretty cool. Actually got a measurement there that we can work with. It's about the right height for hanging my arm out the window too. So that feels really good. I think I'm ready to cruise to Vegas. Well, alrighty then. I am going to still plan on dimple dye on the backs of these seats, I'm waiting on dimple dye to be able to do that. And I guess uh, with that, that's about all I got for you guys in this video. So we'll see you on the next one. How do I get out? There's my door handle. Ooh, I need swivel seats. That would be cool. Old Monte Carlo style. That's that's what I need. Where do I find those brackets at?